What's going on everybody? Little Chris here and in today's video, I'd like to try something a little different. I get asked from time to time, what do I think about a certain pool product? Whether it's a plain cue, a break cue, a jump cue, a glove, even a certain type of tip or whatever. But I always answer it the same way. It just boils down to personal preference. Things that I might like, you might not like, and vice versa. But I figured after being asked these types of questions multiple times, I'd like to try to start a series where I can take a pool product, review it from an amateur pool player's perspective, and then based on my review, you can decide if it's something that you might want to try. So today, I want to try to review a pool cue. So this pool cue is made by J Flowers, and it's a $300 cue with a carbon fiber shaft. So let's take a closer look at it. So first, let's start with the butt of the JFlower 10-10F cue. It's made out of maple, and this one came with a black leather snakeskin pattern wrap. You can also get this wrap in a white ringtail lizard pattern, which looks something like this. Or you can actually get it wrapless, and that looks something like this, and it doesn't change the price of the cue. Now, to my surprise, these inlays are not inlays. They're overlays or decals, if you will. And then we can see that the joint is a thread size of 3 8 Now, I know the first thing you must be thinking about is, why on earth would I even spend $300 on a queue that doesn't even have real inlays? Well, I can't really argue that not until I get to the carbon fiber shaft. But at least even for a decal design, I do have to say that I do rather enjoy the pattern that they put on this. Now here's the carbon fiber shaft for the J Flowers Q. As you can see at the bottom of the shaft, they have a small black collar and then they engrave the J Flowers company name above it with an engraving of a two-piece cue below the company name. Now, I do believe that all J Flowers carbon fiber shafts are standardized, meaning that they all come pro-tapered. They're about 29 inches in length. And then when you get up to the tip, they're all about 12.5 to 12.6 millimeters in diameter and they all come with a Mori medium tip. And as you can see, this tip isn't even chalked yet. So when I hit with this cue for the very first time, I can actually give you a genuine response as to how it feels. Because this is really going to be the heart of the review. Because as I said, this is a $300 cue that comes with a carbon fiber shaft. So if the decals in the butt of the cue actually bother you, just ask yourself this, where else are you actually gonna get a full cue with a carbon fiber shaft for $300? When the average price of your carbon fiber shafts is about $400 or more. So for the price alone, this might actually be worth it, just as long as it performs well. But before we get to that, let's look a little closer at the specs of the entire queue. Now, all JFlower queues come with a certificate of authenticity. That way you can see the model name, part number, and serial number of the queue, along with when the queue was actually made. And then you also have information about the butt and information about the shaft. Now, they also come in a case that looks like this but I actually don't have one of these cases on hand because I actually have a bulk of these cues that I'm gonna be reviewing as time goes by, and they just sent them to me in a bulk case. But do you know that if you do decide to order a JFlower cue, this is more than likely the type of case that it's gonna come in. Now, according to the Certificate of Authenticity, the butt of this cue is supposed to weigh 15.4 ounces. So let's check that out.
and it looks like we're right on the dot, or at least close, 15.3 to 15.4 ounces. And then the shaft of the Q is supposed to weigh 3.7 ounces. And it looks like that's right on the money. So the total weight of this Q is going to be approximately 19.1 or 19 ounces. And I think the Qs do range from 19 to 19 and a half ounces. Now let's look at the length of the butt and the shaft of the Q, which according to the certificate is 29 inches. So let's measure that out. And I'm pretty sure that the length of the butt of the Q is considered from the top of the collar of the joint to the bottom of the bottom collar, and that is exactly 29 inches. But now if I were to include the joint pin along with the rubber bumper, then you get a length that's about 30 and a half inches. So now let's take a look at the shaft, which I'm pretty sure that the length of the shaft is considered from the top of the ferrule to the bottom of the black collar, and you do get exactly 29 inches. But now if I were to include the tip of the Q, it looks like you get about an extra quarter of an inch for a total of 29 and a quarter inches. Now one last spec that I wanna look at before I put together this Q for the first time and start hitting with it is going to be the tip size, which according to the certificate is 12 and a half millimeters. So, I have my digital caliper here to help measure this out. And it looks like it looks like we're pretty darn close. 12.51 millimeters in diameter. All right. Let's put this together for the first time. We'll even check the balance point and then hit a couple of balls with it. Now, all of the cues that I own typically have the balance point right above the grip. And as you can see, pretty much the same thing. So this is really balanced well. Now, let's chalk this up for the first time. And let's hit a couple of balls. So let's just take it through some basic shots first, just so we can see how the cue feels. Now, everybody should know that I typically shoot with a 12.9 carbon fiber shaft. So this 12.5 is going to feel skinnier in my hands. And I, I can say I do feel the difference in the diameter of the cue. But I can not say from a shooting position, this, this actually feels quite nice. But let's just do a simple stop shot. Let's see what kind of audio sound we can get from the hit. And that's actually pretty solid. Now, I use a soft tip, so I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear a slight difference from this Mori Medium versus the soft tip that I have on my key. So let's try a draw shot. Give myself a little angle so I don't just draw it back into the side pocket. Nice solid contact, can't really complain. Let's try some side spin, I'll try top left first. So I'll give myself a little angle here. So I know this is going to be hard for y'all to assess through a video, but you'd have to judge by how the cue sounds. I can at least tell you how it feels in my hand. But of course, if it's in your hand, it might feel slightly different. Let's try a, let's try a bottom inside spin shot, see if I can flare this cue ball three rails. I can honestly say that felt pretty good. But now let's try to take this through a deflection test.
So for our deflection test, for those that might be new to the game of pool, we're checking to see how much the cue ball will deflect off of the cue depending upon how much side spin we hit the cue ball with using front hand English as opposed to backhand English. And if you don't know the difference between front hand English and backhand English, go check out my side spin on the cue ball video. Now, you should see that I have set up on my foot rail a tape measure, and I have another camera zoomed in on the tape measure to show you that the one foot mark, or 12 inches, is going to be the midpoint that I aim for. So when I use right spin on the cue ball, I'm expecting some amount of deflection to cause the cue ball to end up on the left side of the one foot mark. And so we'll be able to see by how much. And then when I use left spin on the cue ball, then I'm expecting the cue ball to deflect off to the right of the one foot mark. But as a baseline, let's hit the cue ball with no side spin, send it down to hit the marker, and have it come back and hit our cue. Now let's try hitting the cue ball with left spin and see how far it deflects to the right of our mark. Let's first start with one tip worth of left spin, and I do expect the cue ball to bank off of the foot rail and then head towards this corner pocket. Now from here, if I had to guess, that looked like about half an inch, but hopefully the close-up showed it better. Now let's try two tips worth of left spin, and I expect the cue ball to bank off the foot rail and head towards the side pocket. And then from here, that actually looked like about an inch. Now, after going back and looking at the footage, I saw that one tip of left spin deflected the cue ball about a quarter of an inch. And then two tips of left spin deflected the cue ball about three eighths of an inch. So a bit of a difference there between one and two tips. Now, when I try right spin on the cue ball, I'm hoping to expect the same amount of deflection, but to the left this time, provided that I can precisely use the same amount of right spin as I did left spin. So first, let's try one tip of right spin and see if we can get the cue ball to come towards this corner pocket. Okay, that roughly looked about the same. Hopefully the close-up will show better. Now let's try two tips of right spin. See the cue ball head towards the side pocket. And I think that looked about the same as well. So that shows a consistency about the deflection, whether you use left spin or right spin. But now let's try to break and run a nine ball rack. Now, after going back and looking at the footage, I saw that one tip of right spin deflected the cue ball to the left about a half an inch, while two tips of right spin deflected the cue ball about nine sixteenths of an inch. And the reason why there's a difference between right spin versus left spin is more than likely because I didn't precisely use the same amount of side spin and or the possibility of me just not aiming as straight as I possibly could between the two tests. But one thing that did remain consistent was the difference between one tip versus two tips of right spin, which was relatively small. 
And that I do have to say is pretty good. Now let's try to break and run this nine ball rack. Okay, it looks like we got the wing ball to fall. Do have position on the one, but it's a pretty thin cut to the side pocket. You can see the cue ball is going to run into the eight, so I'm probably just going to use a little bit of right spin to make sure that I can get position for the two. Okay, I have a small angle on the two, so I can play this, I think, with just some top spin and get position for the three in the side. I can just roll this three in and have automatic position for the five in the opposite side. Now from here, I think I am going to play this with a little bit of center left so that when I hit the short rail, I can kind of spin towards the opposite side pocket to get decent position on the six. And then from here, I can just gently roll this in for position on the seven. Now I'm going to try to have the cue ball more than likely play two rails, one, two, to be able to play the same shot on the eight and be able to go one, two for position on the nine. I'm going to play this with some top right spin. And then from here, I can pretty much do the same thing, but with top left spin. And finish off with a nine in the corner. And that's going to wrap up my review of the JFlower JF10-10F playing cue. Now, I do have to say that this cue plays really well. And considering that it's only $300 and comes with a carbon fiber shaft, I can certainly recommend this to any beginner that is interested in wanting to try out a carbon fiber cue. Now, does this cue measure up to the cues that I normally play with? Personally, I'm going to have to say that it falls short. But that's only because I prefer to play with a 12.9 millimeter carbon fiber shaft with a softer tip, which is why I always say that when it comes to owning pool cues, it just boils down to personal preference because a lot of you out there like to play with specs like these. Now, is this something that I can adjust myself to playing to? Well, of course it is because it's no different than how I adjusted myself to playing with the specs that I do now, but don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. Literally, try this cue out for yourself because I'm going to be giving this cue away to one of my lucky subscribers. Now, the way this giveaway is going to work is like I said, you have to be one of my subscribers. So if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, but be sure that your subscription list is public so that I can verify that you're one of my subscribers. Give this video a thumbs up and then leave a comment. In the comment section below, let me know what you thought of the queue throughout the video and what you thought of the tests that I put the queue through. Are there other types of tests that you'd like to see me put other queues through? And then something a little different that I want to try with this giveaway is that every dollar of this queue I feel is worth a hundred views. So help me share this video around and get it up to 30,000 views because the moment this video reaches 30,000 views, I will go live and then randomly pick one of the comments and that will be the winner of this J flower cube.
Now, if for any reason you can't wait until this video gets up to 30,000 views, you can certainly go and check out their website at www.jflowersqs.com. And until the end of the month, you can use the discount code LILCHRIS, L-I-L-C-H-R-I-S in all caps to get 10% off of your purchase. So now a $300 Q is only worth $270 plus shipping and handling. So if you like what you saw here, as a reminder, subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then leave a comment in the comment section below, and then help share this video around to get it up to 30,000 views. Take care, everybody.